He turned towards Jerusalem because he's not turning towards where the idol gods are. I'm going to turn towards my homeland where Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rofika, Jehovah Mekadish, right Jehovah Sikhanu is reigning as God. I will praise him and I will worship him with my eyes towards Jerusalem because I have to have my eyes on him and I have to see him in order to glorify him and lift him up. And then of course, he not only that, he had an attitude in prayer. And that is, he got down on his knees. He humbled himself and he kneeled in prayer. And the word here is Barak. That is to bless the blessor. He magnifies God. I feel something happening here. Can I just take a digression here? When you read about Judas, Judas' name means praise. Judas is the Greek derivative of the Hebrew Judah. And it means to praise. And yet still the praiser betrayed Jesus. The praiser can betray Jesus because everything that had breath or to praise the Lord. Uh, any kind of breath, good breath, bad breath, stealing breath, nasty breath, everything that has breath, all praise the Lord because you praise him for what he does. But now a praiser can betray Jesus, but a worshiper can't. Because to worship, you have to worship in spirit. Oh my God. spirit which means that I am not going to betray him because some people around me don't like me I'm not going to act like I don't have a relationship with him to have a relationship with them I'd rather have a relationship with him than a relationship with anybody around because I need him when others are going to be there for me when folk turn their back on you you better be a worshiper when folk don't like you and insist on destroying you, you better be a worshiper. Because worshippers don't betray their God for deeply and things and people. They keep on worshiping him because I know him in spirit and in truth. And I'd rather be broke with him than I have money with you. a relationship with anybody you don't communicate with. Uh, I feel like preaching now. Give somebody a high five for the first time and say, I know that's right. Uh, when I stop talking to you, that's when we have a problem. If I'm fussing at you or hollering at you, we're still doing all right. But when I don't talk to you, uh, it's all over. The game is over. It's done. Uh, I think then of this, and I think of Jesus, and he's on the cross. And what Matthew says is that the last words of Jesus was, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? His mother was at the cross. He could have said to her, Mother, you know the way I was born and how unique my birth was. Mother, why has God forsaken me? He could have talked to his disciples, said, I fed 5,000, I walked on water. Can you guys tell me how come God has forsaken me? He could have talked to John, after all, he is Jesus, John the Baptist, and he said, you saw the unique way that I was baptized, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon me and descended like a dove. John, can you tell me, why has God forsaken me? I fed 5,000, I used his name, I backed him up in everything, on the Mount of Transfiguration, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. Can you all tell me why God has forsaken me? The real issue here is in spite of not even feeling God, he was still talking to God. I don't know where you are, but why have thou forsaken me? I don't know where you are, but I'm still talking to you. You know when you can worship God when you don't even feel God. And when you look at you, the circumstances don't understand what's going on around you 
if you can still raise your holy hands and give God glory. The question is, what else can the devil do to you? If I'm praising him when I don't feel him, I'm praising him when I lose my job. I'm still worshiping him when I don't know where he is. I don't know what's going on. Now, devil, tell me, what else can you do to me? I'm here to stay till I die. Because if I don't feel him, I'm still going to praise him. Stop talking to God. Look at somebody and just tell them, keep on talking to God. Oh, it's rough and the road is tough, but keep on talking to God. Lost my job, lost my house, but I'm going to keep on talking to God. Don't feel heavy in my body, got pain all over my body, but I'm going to keep on talking to God. And he prayed, yes, he prayed three times. And he kept on praying, and he continued to pray, and of course, he gave thanksgiving in prayer. He gave thanks before his God. That's number six. He kept gave thanks before his God. Because you can't enter into the place of God and feel his presence or his spirit. And it doesn't automatically lead you to give him praise. It doesn't matter what you're coming for. Anytime you feel him and see him in the splendorous magnanimity of his glory. You have to stop and say, Lord, I came to get a car, but I, I need to say you look good. You see, that's what prayer starts with, with giving thanks. You enter into his court, my God, giving thanks because you're wonderful to me. You look good to me. I just got to lift my hands up and glorify because I feel your presence. And every time he glorified his God, the enemy was mad. I want to kill him. I want him to die. Can I preach like a human? I'm almost there. It's significant because they found out they could find nothing about Daniel except the fact that he was holy. I feel like preaching now. You know, it's something that folk, and the folk you have run with in your life, they have no problem when you were buying drinks and spending your money in the park and buying drugs and No problem when you were buying and just shifting stuff around. But as soon as they see that you pay your tithe, like you put them all When you were smoking joints all night and drinking to daylight, you ain't got nothing to say. When you were going to the club and the strip tease, you don't have anything to say. But now that I've cleaned up my life and I've given my life to the Lord, now you got a whole lot to say. But I don't want to be around him anymore because he's just too goody goody. I feel like preaching here. Make you 